Even though almost everyone these days would like some flexibility in their work life, it is still frequently frowned upon in the workplace. There are many assumptions about flexibility that influence how, when, and if flexible work practices are offered or accepted. Good policies are not enough to ensure flexibility works. We need to address the myths that are affecting the attitudes and mindset of leaders and teammates. It's just for mums with bubs. Research shows the demand for flexibility is coming from all age groups and genders. Where they differ is on the type of flexible options they want. It's vital that an organization's approach to flexibility is underpinned by equity, fair treatment, because people have different needs and do not have to all work the same way in order to work effectively. Give people an inch and they will take a mile. The paradox is that rather than take advantage, people who feel valued and supported in achieving work-life integration are more likely to go the extra mile for the company. Flexible working does require trust and cooperation. But when those values are cultivated, not only does flexible work thrive, it also leads to stronger commitment and greater engagement. If there are people that abuse flexible work practices, that is a performance management issue, not a problem with flexibility. Working flexibly means working less. Studies have shown just the opposite, that flexible workers are often the most productive because they're more focused and effective in the use of their time. There's no need for direct supervision of competent people. Outputs, outcomes and the quality of the work are the key things to monitor. It is impractical for this role. Because most of our jobs have been done in a particular way for a long time, it's often hard to imagine them being done differently. Management roles, customer-facing roles, shift work, all of these are situations where people have said flexibility is impossible. And yet there are many organizations applying flexibility to these types of jobs, giving people greater autonomy and control over how they work in order to deliver the best results. It's career suicide. Unfortunately, in some cases, this is true. But it arises from the myth that people working flexibly are less committed or less ambitious than those who do not. This is actually a self-fulfilling prophecy. Research shows that when the organization and leaders are supportive of flexibility, then people in flexible roles are just as ambitious and successful as everyone else. If I say yes to one person, then I have to say yes to everyone. Anyone can request flexible work arrangements, but not every mode of flexibility is practical in every role. Leaders must decide whether flexibility can be reasonably accommodated, taking into account the requirements of the job. But this should be done in an inclusive and creative way, with the goal of finding a win-win outcome. Team members also have to understand that flexible work arrangements are sometimes experimental and need to adapt to the role. We have to accept no when flexibility is not feasible. Dispelling these myths and embracing flexibility as part of smart business strategy will deliver a competitive advantage in today's globalized economy.